I have to start thinking about a spindle for this homemade machine now. What kind of a tool am I going to use for a like a router? I have this router over here is a Sears router. Works out pretty good. And uh, so I need to get one for this. So I guess I had better go shopping for that. First stop, Harbor Freight. I've got my 20% coupon. Let's go see what they have. Well, yes, I went to Harbor Freight, used my coupon, and I paid about $44 for this. I think it'll work out great. I've got some other goodies too, including a free multimeter. Another one. It's probably about the tenth one I have. I've been through this before with routers and hooking them up to homemade machines so I know what it's all about. Trying to retrofit something that spins as fast and this heavy isn't easy. So the name of the game is to buy simple. Don't buy a router with a bunch of bells and whistles because you're not going to use them anyway. We're, we're going to tear this apart just down to its motor. This thing was, like I said, $45 or something like that with a coupon. So if it burns out, you just get another one. I want to make this one so it mounts so I can take it in or out and use the actual base that came with it when I want to do handheld jobs. I didn't do that on the Craftsman. I wish I would have. So this one I'm going to. So it looks like they give me some wrenches. Let's see what's in this bag. So these are the two cullets, I think. Half inch and quarter. That's a plus. So now you can run two different sizes of bits. These are guide rails. If you use it as a handheld. Two different cheap wrenches. One for holding, one for loosening the cullet. That must just be the insert to the cullet. And an end mill. Huh. Wonder why they gave me an end mill. I'm glad they did, don't get me wrong. So it looks like a half inch end mill. Chinese made, but hey, it's free, right? I'll take it. And then the instructions. Oh look here. There's some spare brushes. And springs. Well. So as you can tell, or hopefully tell, there's value here. You get everything you need pretty cheap. And hey, we're not in the professional part building or nothing like that. We're just doing this as a hobby, so it's okay to buy cheap tools. There's no crime against it, you know. You get more if you buy cheap. And the ones that you want to last longer, buy a little better. If a router is important to you, then buy a good one. Me, I like to buy, you know, I like to get as much as I can for my money, quantity-wise. So there it is, there's the behemoth. Just a real simple on and off switch, no speed control. This is a brushed motor though, so I'll be able to put a speed control on this. Right here. And this is also a Harbor Freight item. So we just plug our router into this box and then we have our speed control. And we'll just leave this on and we can use this as our power switch too. This is just uh, so you can adjust the height if you're using the base and it has a fine scale here too. It probably turns. No, it doesn't turn. It's marked though. 
So you know if you want to cut down so far you can use this as a gauge. But again we're not using any of this. Not on this project anyway. But I'm going to keep this. Now the way that this goes on it twists so I'm going to have to come up with a twisting collar to mount this. That's the one thing I considered when I bought this. Let's see how this collet works. There's a flat spot on the shaft here that my wrench fits on. Looks like there's already an insert in here. Looks like a half inch. So they gave me an extra half inch one plus a quarter inch probably. Unless that's like three eighths. So look at there, three cullets. Unless I'm mistaken here. Let's put a uh, let's put that end mill in here. Look there. I can't believe they gave me two other cullets. I'll read in the book and see what size these are. By the way, this is the Harbor Freight Drillmaster two horsepower fixed base router. And your motor speeds and your input. Look at that. Quarter, three eighths, and half inch cullet. That is sweet. I didn't expect that. That's sweet. I like that. Good job. Okay, it says it's off. First, I'm just going to plug it into the main straight in. There we go. No smoke, no fire. That's a good thing. Well, let's hear what it sounds like. Loud as hell. My other one is too though, so... Even if you pay more money, it's still going to be loud. Sorry guys. If you don't want it loud, get like a servo one, you know. Spend the big money. Alright, so this is maximum of 15 amp. And you can go off, full, and variable. We're in the off. Alright, let's see what happens here. Ready? Let me turn it all the way down and then turn it on. Nothing. I bet you guys seen that, didn't you? I forgot to turn the power switch on. <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on guys, 60, 70 bucks for this whole setup. That's a bargain. Okay, I was just thinking, this is a mount from an old machine. I might be able to use this. This is just a homemade route, um, piece of wood. And I had brackets on here and I mounted it to the side of the machine like this. And I had a dust collection, I had a uh, plate that went down here like a plexiglass plate with a brush and then I had an inlet vacuum port here a tube that came down close to the spindle and then this had a skirt all the way around it I'll probably do that again that worked out well before I'll show you the skirt on the other one yeah forgive the garbage on this table but uh, here it is same thing, it has angle here and a wood mount. And I have a video where I made this. I'll try to find it in my library and put it up in the, the description. Anyway, these are magnetic. And they go like that. And I have two different sizes of skirts. I've got short and I've got long. So depending on how long my bit is, is what skirt I use. And you can see the magnets here. They're just rare earth magnets. And there's the matching ones up here. 
So I'm pretty happy with this mount, so I'm going to copy as much of it as I can for that machine over there. Yeah. This one even has the air hook up to blow chips. I don't think I'm going to worry about that right now, this part of it. But I certainly want the vacuum, this tube, and the skirt mount. And of course that. Yeah, I got a lot to do. Oof. So this mount's good if you're wanting to mount like a Dremel tool to your router. I whack this out in a few minutes. Pretty simple really. Two pieces of wood tapped. Or not even tapped, just uh, through hole. And they go into these blind nuts back here. But you got a little clamping room there, you know. You can loosen these up. These are tapped. Come to think of it. Yep, these are tapped. I've also got these bolts, and there are metal blind nuts back here that uh, I'm going to use for mounting holes, probably. I've got some other holes tapped here, too, so you never know. I might use other ones. I have to figure this out. It's a mystery. Well, I have no real plan, but I'm just going to jump in here and start building something off this. And the plan is to mount this down here using bolts up here so it'll hang down and I can use this hopefully. So let me plan that out and I'll be back after I ponder that. So yeah, building is a lot of problem solving and this is just that same thing. I'm going to use this leftover angle aluminum that I have from a project I just took apart and I've even got the bolts. I've got other angle here but uh, it's not nearly as thick except for this stuff but it's too wide. So anyway I'm going to reuse some parts here. Ah, oh, perfect fit. Well, I managed to get it in there. It's setting in there. It uh, needs clamped in. You can see it's just sitting there. But uh, I still need to give it a dust skirt and stuff like that. And I'm worried it's a little bit too high. I might have to move it down. And if I do, I do. It's just part of learning. But uh, I'll try it out for now and see how it does. But yeah, I'm getting there. And yes, it does move up and down with the new added weight. Although, if I'm to change the motor, that will be the first one. A little underrated. 80 ounce motor. Yeah. Now it's decision time. I've been playing around with this. You can see I put the bottom of the router on here just to hold this in place. I thought about cutting this part off. I mean, after all, this router was only $40. So I could just take a metal saw and cut this bottom off and use it for a locking collar. Or I could just make my own locking collar. But I do like this one because it has the latch back here that tightens it down. And it would be more effort to make my own, but I could do it. 
but uh, chances are I think I'm going to cut this one off. And one more thing is I think I'm going to have to move this whole thing down like this. We'll move to here and I'll make new holes for here. I think the whole thing is just too high and I'm not going to be able to make deep cuts when I need to. So I think I'm going to have to just bite the bullet and move this down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll, I'll think more about this locking collar here. Let's figure out what I'm going to do with that. Let me go ahead and move this down a whole step though. I'll have to drill new holes and put blind nuts in there. Not a biggie. A little more about this collar. You can see these little nubs in there. There's one there and one there and there's actually a third one here and they ride on this screw and as you turn it it tightens it up and then of course this clamp clamps it in place but uh, I just wanted to show that I think I'm going to totally cut that I can always buy another one for hand use if I want to do that anyway on with moving this down alright so I moved it down to here and I bolted it here I'm going to go ahead and make the holes and run the blind nuts in for the bottom I think that'll be a better height these are the inserts I'm using they're called blind nuts and these are quarter inch and you push them in a hole on the back and then you know it stays with the wood then you can use these so it's a strong joint blind nuts here's a shot of that blind nut before I tighten it up you can see it's ready to poke into the wood in the back so when I screw on this it'll pull this into the wood and seat itself because it has these spikes and then the blind nut will become part of this wood then when you take the screw out it will remain anyway enough about blind nuts I don't have the proper length so I have to make it yeah now I can reach way down in there I'm still not bottomed out and look how close it is I've got that shoe on there just for giggles micro switch still has a little ways now I'll raise it up we'll see how much travel we have there so there it just hit the micro switch and I think I've got plenty of room there and I still have another set of holes with blind knots if I ever have to move it up for any reason so now I have a couple options now I want to mount my Harbor Freight speed control I'm going to put it here on this side I figured out with my travel that right in here is a pretty good spot I'm going to open it up and see if I can drill right through it because it all, all it has for mounting is a, a belt clip that's silly isn't it why would you want a belt clip on this thing <laughs> I had to open up the unit to put this bracket on for mounting and while I was in here I was poking around and I think I'm gonna just put some more solder on a couple of these AC joints they look firm but uh, since I'm in here I might as well hit them one more time and um, I looked this part number up it was a BTA 26 it's a like a general purpose triac for AC main switching so that's not a problem but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and freshen up the solder before I mount it I forget how much I paid for this I think it was around I want to say twenty dollars but I might be off on that somebody write it in the comments if you know that ought to work And that completes the speed control mounting right there and I've wired these up with ties to move 
along with the gantry just right. There'll be no hang-ups. So the story goes, you know, you do one thing and then there's another waiting to be done. That's okay. This is kind of an involved project and I knew it would be. I've got this sitting right on the deck now and um, I could totally level that table um, because it goes that low. I still want to make up a ring or something. I don't want this bottom piece on because it's just too hard to get your tools in there to do the changes. You know, you need two wrenches and um, this thing just gets in the way of the cullet. But, uh, yeah. I think it's time to start the uh, dust skirt and figure out this thing. Other than that, I think it's looking okay. It's looking good. I also purchased another one of these bucket vacuums. You just buy just the head here, and then you put, put it in your own bucket. And I've used these in the past, and I have one on the other machine, and it works well. And then a Cyclone dust collector, I'll either make or buy one of those to go in line with this. That's a must when you're picking up MDF dust. It's the Bucket Max 6.5 amp. And I bought this at Lowe's for, I think it was $25. Pretty good value. I just put this filter on there, and for my information, this is a 90107 filter made by Shop Vac Inc. By the way, I've been monitoring this temperature of my controller box inside. And I think it's fair to say that it's going to stay cool. I've left it on for hours at a time, and uh, this seems to be the normal when it's just sitting idle, 81. So it looks like the controller's doing a good job. So what I'm thinking is make a dust skirt and vacuum pickup exactly like I did on this machine over here. I just put this on the table to see what it would do and it looks like it will line right up. So I think I'm going to make a top plate that matches the one over there and mount it up here. That way I can use the dust skirts that I already have made for both machines. That might be the smart way to go. Let me think that over. So yeah, I think I can totally do that. I hope I still have those files somewhere. It might be on that hard drive I pulled out. I made this a long time ago. I'm sure they're around somewhere. That way I could just cut another top plate to fix this. To fit this rather and make sure that the magnets and stuff line up and I'll be able to use the same shoe. I think we might be on to something. Plus Steve had an idea. He said put a ring of LED lights around the spindle. They sell um, rings of LEDs, you know. And uh, I could power them from 12 volt or whatever. And it would provide lighting under the shoe. So maybe I'll do that too. This Hoover vacuum had to give up its hose and its pouting. Get over it, Mr. Hoover. You can still work without it. Man, that fits perfectly on that hose. There's Mr. Hoover's hose. And here's the original back one. Thanks again, Mr. Hoover. Well, I've been putting off this. This is a switch so I can run two or more things on the same Ethernet cable for the internet and the wire coming out of the wall is fixed so this has to go to the wall or the shelf and I need two wires that come to each of these machines you can see how I've got it rigged up that's not gonna work so I need wires hmm wires in a shelf there's a giant one. And the search continues. I added an eye bolt to this uh, bender, this acrylic bender that I made. Now I can hang it on the wall. That hangs nicely right there. 
And look what I found. Dushu plants. It's getting better. This is the drawing for the top view. This. That part has magnets and it's attached with these bolts. See? I'm on to something. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I gotta hang this on the wall. Go through. Oh yeah, I took out the, uh, look at there. The Y key's still on there. I only took out the uh, 7. That's kind of fun. Let's do another one. I gotta get that fan. Maybe. That's no match for my Ryobi. Here we go. Guess what I'm making yet? Hang on, you'll see. What is it? Yep, it's my hillbilly shelf. On sale now, $150 plus shipping. So there's the new shelf in all its glory. Now I have to cut a new piece of foam for this table. I use it for my sacrificial surface and I use that pink insulation foam. And I've got a big sheet of it in here I've got to cut down to fit this because this router is going to be making a part for this router. How cool is that? It's a self-replicating machine. Need a piece of foam. 21 and an eighth by 20. There's the foam. It's pink insulation. I bought it at Home Depot. It's like a half inch thick. Yeah, maybe three quarters. two-sided tape I think I'm gonna have to get some bigger motors on the other one I haven't used this techno in a while and I forgot just how fast it was a home pretty quick Not bad. So anyway, I'll put motors on here after a while. And uh, by the way, I was homing this with soft limits, not with micro switches. Works pretty good. Look it up. I talked about it in another video if you're interested in soft limits. Here's the bit that I'm going to use for the acrylic. This is quarter inch, two flute acrylic bit made just for acrylic. Works pretty sweet.
popped a breaker. Good thing I was done. Yeah, I popped a breaker on that ISO bar back there, so evidently I've got too many things plugged in there. I was doing the second pass and it was almost finished. I think this part will be okay. It, it could have happened at a better time. So yeah, I think the part's fine. Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. Clean it up, see if it fits. And distribute my power more evenly through that ISO bar. And figure that out. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that cut. And like I said, it stopped just in the right spot. So no damage was done. It looks just like the picture, except I modified it a little bit. And I've got to bolt it up here with some long bolts, and I do not have those. I look through my bolts, and I have miscellaneous sizes and not enough threaded rod, and I want it to look like this one over here. You can see how I've got the long bolts going through, and I've double nutted it, and that will hang down there. So, yeah. Well, that's it for now. I ran out of parts to mount this up. I need some nuts and bolts and washers and threaded rod to finish this. But you can see how it's going to sit. My dust shoe will go right up under there and I have to install some rare earth magnets and it will just stick up there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next time when we work on the machine, I'll show you how to level the table. In this case, we're going to be leveling the phone. That's my sacrificial material and a couple of you asked me how I level the table and I'll show that and then we'll cut our first project we're getting really close so thanks for watching don't forget to uh, give us one of these it helps us out and leave us a comment below we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching bye for now how many of you guys would like to see one of these necks being cut on the new machine for our first project? It's a little bit ambitious, but what do you think? Let me know. <laughs>